back to my YouTube channel. I'm Ari and today we have a little surprise or not so little. This is Cusco. Cusco is our new newfie puppy. Baloo is taking a nap over there. I kind of rushed this video because this guy is growing so so fast. So I really wanted to get this video while he's still this size. Anyway, this is Cusco. Cusco is currently 11 weeks old. He's going on 12, so almost three months old. We just picked him up about a week and a half ago. He's actually chewing on a yak milk cheese treat. Uh, I don't know, I'll link it below, but apparently super long lasting, really good for them, so, and they don't stink like bully sticks. I really wanna say thank you. My very first Newfie video was like three years ago, and I really just sat down and kinda of like talked about it, and you guys, it's been such a great response. It, so many people have told me it's extremely helpful to them. That was just kind of like me talking about the breed and what I knew at the time. Sometimes I watch it and I'm like, oh, I missed this and I missed that and blah, blah, blah. I'm gonna share a few tips. I mean, everything about bringing this guy home and a few tips about bringing home a puppy, which some of them will apply to any dog, any puppy, any size, shape, breed, whatever. And others are very specific to a giant breed. So we've actually talked about getting a second dog for a really long time. I don't know if you remember this, but Baloo, I might have mentioned this in a previous video, Baloo was meant to be our second. Our previous newfie passed away kind of unexpectedly the same week we were picking up Baloo. Kind of threw us off. And then when Baloo arrived, he was, he was a handful. So we decided to wait until Baloo was fully trained, more calm and everything like that. And then the pandemic happened and then we just kind of got in the groove and we were like having one dog works really well for us. Baloo will be seven this year. He's in great shape, he's super active. So we decided to be like, you know what? He's still pretty young, pretty active to take in a new puppy and then he would be helping us as well. Bringing a puppy into your home when you have an older, fully trained dog is usually a good idea because of course, monkey see, monkey do. The puppies do copy a lot, a lot of the behavior from the older dog. It doesn't mean you don't have to put in the work, believe me, you still do have to put in so much work, but it does help. That was our theory, so here we are. We got Cusco now. If you haven't guessed it by now, we did name him after Emperor Cusco from <laughs> The Emperor's New Group. I just love, love, love that movie. Picking up Cusco was a bit of an ordeal. Uh, this was my mistake. If you follow me on Instagram, I've already talked about it. I accidentally punched in the wrong city that we were flying to and we ended up flying to Nashville. The plan was to drive only two hours to pick up Cusco and then drive back. I'm going to drive back to Nashville and fly out. And um, apparently the actual city that we needed to get to was close to seven hours from Nashville. We ended up having to drive seven hours, to pick him up, and then from there changed our flight to Chicago because we were already super close to Chicago and flew out from Chicago. It was worth it. Baloo loves it. We know our dog. We know he's very social, but of course that's all that fear of whether your dog is gonna accept the new puppy or not. Okay, well I have this video, I do have to talk about playing and roughhousing inside or indoors. You have to be very careful with giant breeds because they can hurt a puppy very easily. So we're only letting them play indoors like this if Baloo is down and then if they start to jump up or anything, we take it outside. We're also being very careful while Cusco is young. We don't want them playing like this a lot inside the house. Um, I don't talk about a lot about breeders and I know I get a lot of about that the reason being is not you but some people just want the easy way out they just want the name of a breeder because they think they're cute and they just want to get them there are breeds that you really need to do your research to know what you're getting so I feel if I just say like a list of breeders people just go for it and then not know what they're we'll talk about how to find a reputable breeder in the next video we recommend going to the Newfoundland Club of America website they have tons and tons of information they even have like a a phone number where you can talk and they'll give you you know they'll talk about you about the dogs and even refer you to a breeder when you're getting a puppy you're overly excited you've thought this through but you're not a hundred percent what it's gonna be like and even for those of us that have been through it you forget about it you forget what it's like having a puppy at home I mean I totally forgot how much work it was like I kind of knew but you haven't lived it recently. Like we haven't lived it in over six years. You kind of forget. Things you need to prepare for, definitely I would say get a crate. Get a crate that is big enough for your dog to grow into. We never crate trained Baloo because he was a single dog. I was more, I was at home all the time. So I, we figured like I could 
do it. But now, since it's two dollars, we are crate training Cusco. He's not a big fan of the crate yet. We are not crating him at night because he's a really good sleeper, thankfully. He'll sleep through the night and next to the bed, he doesn't mind it. But we are crating him for when we have to leave the house so that he doesn't get into any trouble. Also, we're doing it because they do play together. If I'm not here to supervise, we just want to avoid any injuries. Puppies are highly, highly food motivated. So you are going to need the treats for the training and for everything. Even learn their name. Like the training treats. The little ones also are reader recommend just giving them plain Cheerios for some, you know, they're very low calorie and just pop them in and they'll eat anything at this age, which is good or bad. Prepare for the size of the dog you're getting. And this happened to me. You see all the cute stuff because you're getting a puppy and everything. You spend all this money like a collar. They'll only wear it for a month or two if you're getting a large breed. So kind of like prepare for the size. Same goes with the crate. You know, you might think like a small crate works well, but you will have to, you know, switch it up for a larger one. It's very, very important that this, almost, I think he's like 30 pounds right now, will end up being blue or bigger. So know that when you're getting this, you're also getting that picture of blue here. You know, you're also getting a 150 pound dog. Don't spend a whole lot on puppy stuff. Um, yes, puppy, like puppy food, all the essentials, yes. But don't spend a whole lot on a collar, on a leash, on a bed. You know, puppy beds, seriously, they either chew them up, pee on them multiple times. So don't even spend on a super cute. And then again, they're gonna outgrow them. We use towels, like kind of like old towels that if he pees on them, he'll just throw them in. We even removed our carpets right now, our area rugs. We had one that kind of has like little knots, which was of course like a playground for him. Just particularly Newfie puppies. They drink so much water. I mean, a Newfoundland dog in general, like Baloo drinks so much water. Take their water outside and you kind of like time it a little bit better. Give them free access to water if I'm home and I have it, like right now the weather's really nice. So I have the doors open so he can come in and out. We do remove their water around seven so that way he can sleep through the night. And then again, once they wake up, again, water with their food and everything. They do need a lot of water. They're growing, you know, they're growing babies, but they drink way too much water that they don't need. And a lot of times they're just jumping. I mean, he's just playing in his bowl of water. It's not that he's drinking, he's just getting wet. And then again, with potty training, it just it makes it easier to know when they're drinking water, to know when they have to pee and when they have to go out. And Keep your breeder on speed dial. If you find a breeder that will just sell you a dog and then doesn't want to hear from you ever again, that is not a good breeder. Most reputable breeders want to know how their puppies are doing, want to know how they're growing, how they're getting used to, and they'll always be there for you. Advice like, hey, he's doing this, he's doing that. For example, our breeder was super nice and said, call me if you have any doubts before going to the vet. This is what they do. They specialize in these dogs. They'll know what's normal and what's not. If something's not normal, they'll tell you, okay, go to the vet right now. But a lot of things, it's just, it's normal puppy behavior, normal puppy newbie behavior. Okay, excuse the voiceover again. I just forgot to mention that Cusco and Baloo are not from the same breeder. Unfortunately, Baloo's breeder stopped breeding a few years ago and we were not able to get a, another dog from them. But Cusco is from a breeder that I had in my contacts for a while now. I love their dogs. They are highly recommended and I actually love them as people and what they stand for and their preservation of the breed. So we're really happy to have a dog from them. Insurance. We just finally signed up for insurance. We signed him up and we were able to get Baloo covered because he's been pretty healthy. So the bigger the dog, the more expensive their vet bills are. But having two of them, twice the vet bill, so it's a good idea to have. Yes, it is an expense, but that's something that you also need to keep in mind when you get a new fee or a giant breed, you know, it's what you're getting into. It's having like higher vet bills, higher um, expenses, grooming, etc. So that goes into what I've said in my previous videos, just knowing what you're getting into. This breed is a big commitment. For the purpose of the video, he, him being so small still and so dark that you can't see him that well, I decided to do it on the bed, but this does not happen. As soon as they get home, you need to completely prohibit anything that you wouldn't want a 150 pound version of him doing. For example, for us, my husband is allergic to dogs. Been able to control it a lot with newfies just because how, you know, how we take care of them, the grooming, the cleaning in the house, and we do not allow them on the furniture. That's something that we do not like. We don't want them on there. I mean, we love them, but they're not allowed on the furniture. 
So those are things you need to work on as soon as they arrive. Whatever you allow them to do when they're puppies, they're gonna expect to do once they grow. Next up, if you're bringing in a puppy with an older dog, here's the thing, some dogs, like I said, do not want to deal with a puppy. So if that's the case, take it at their own pace. Do not force it, don't try to make them play together. Just let them do their own thing. If the older dog doesn't want to meet any of the puppy, just let them. They'll eventually find their groove. Maybe they'll be best friends once he's grown. That happened to us actually. I had a black lab and he had grown up with my childhood golden retriever. My golden passed away. He got her first new. Our lab did not like our new, like the puppy. Once he grew up, they were best friends. But as a puppy, I think he just didn't know what to do with him. Baloo, on the other hand, we always have that little like, eh, it's gonna happen. He's an extremely social dog. We've seen him around puppies. We've seen him play with our my sister-in-law's dogs. We've seen him how he is and he loves puppies. So we decided to go for it and we have been, it, we're so happy. I mean, honestly, they, they just love each other. The first couple of days, it's like they don't know each other yet. After that, I mean, Kuzka's just like jumping on top of him sleeping next to him. I mean, it's just really, really cute. Um, so just let them kind of like, don't force it. Don't think like, oh, they're going to hate each other forever or I need to make them best friends right now, this very moment. Um, it, it, you know, it comes and goes. Some dogs never like each other. So there's also that. But what I've come to learn is that they'll eventually, you know, become friendly. So puppy behavior also, they are master thieves. They will steal, chew, and break through whatever they can. So this is on you to prepare that you will have to supervise them like 100% of their time. Unless they're in their crate, you need to be on them. I mean, they will steal something like that. It can be something, it's not that big of a deal. It can be something that they can break. It can be something that they can chew through. And it could be something that is potentially life-threatening for them. There's a technique that Personally, I've tried. I, if you don't want to lock up your dogs, it's not fair for them to have them locked up all the day, but you don't trust them yet, like I do with this guy, uh, put a leash on them and just kind of like keep them close to you. So that way you're doing your own stuff. If you're on the computer, if you're like walking around the house, he learns to stay with you instead of just like, ooh, free range around the house. And also crating, I should have said this at the beginning. If you're gonna, buy a dog to have a puppy and crate him for several hours of a day, don't get the puppy. I mean, puppies can only be in a crate for one to two hours max, and then you can increase the time a little bit more, but still, I mean, it's not fair to a dog to have him in a crate the entire day just because you're busy or something like that. As soon as your puppy arrives, book your vet's appointment. If you're bringing home a puppy from a good breeder, you know, they will give you all their health checks and they are in good shape, but you never know. That's also, one of the main reasons why you never, never, never want to buy from a backyard breeder, uh, pet shop or anything, because you have no idea where the puppies are coming from. And a lot of times these puppies are not in good shape. So you start off on the wrong foot, but yeah, take them to the vet, get them introduced to your vet, you know, make, get them to know him and just have a good relationship and ask them anything you might need, get them all the shots, all the deworming that they might be due for. Again, once you bring a puppy home, they usually come with their first sets of shots and deworming, but they're probably due for the next round and so on. But allow your puppy at least like a week to settle into your house. Like don't overwhelm him. Don't take him out all the time, especially because they might pick up a bug or something or get sick, but also because they're still, they've just moved away from their little pack. Uh, back home into your new house and they're still figuring it out they're still settling in so I mean if if you're just gonna like buy a puppy and then take off on a trip it's like dude what the hell where's my family I mean what am I doing here or if you bring a puppy home and you, you know to a friend's house and everything it'll have a really hard time settling down and settling into routine because they they're not figuring out what their space is and we're starting puppy classes um, just to get them socialized. I really, I'm a firm believer in puppy classes, even though Baloo is trained and I do kind of like work on them a lot at the house. I think it just works, especially because they go to a new place, they socialize with other dogs, they get to that exposure of being in a different setting and everything once they're settled into their house. Do be strict. When I say strict, I don't mean violent. I don't mean angry. I just mean you do need to have a firm hand. That they feel so bad about being a little bit 
hard on their dogs because they feel it's like torture or something like that. It won't hurt their feelings. You just, you know, it's like they're babies. They don't know what they're doing. They need to be taught. You need to put in the work. That's why we struggle because Baloo is at a point that I trust him with my life, with the house. I know he's not gonna eat, chew anything up. He's not gonna pee inside the house. That's something that we're trying to recreate. That's the goal, to have a dog that you trust completely with their surrounding. But Lou stays loose the entire day around the house. And even if we're not here, he's still out around the house and we never have a worry anymore as a puppy he was the devil of what he's doing you know he knows this is his house or while you're working at home while you're busy while you're taking care of the kids while you're cooking you know you want that you want that companion that is not a burden because you have no idea of what he's doing i'm going to talk about new fees i know other breeds do this do not neuter a new fee before they're two years old a new fee takes a Real long time to fully develop to fully grow if you neuter him too early that just messes up their growth when you neuter a dog they tend to gain a little bit of weight so if their joints if their hips are not fully developed and fully you know formed that might be too much for them some vets want to neuter as soon as you get that puppy and you really have to stand up for them and say like no this is a giant breed so do not do it whichever like good breeder you talk to will tell you do not neuter them or spay them. I, I haven't had any girls, so I'm not sure about the the age with um, females. An overweight puppy is not a healthy puppy. They need to stay on the leaner side when they're younger to allow them to develop health. You don't want to put too much weight because that will probably lead to early arthritis, hip dysplasia, you know, a bunch of things. Might not even be prone to that they're born completely healthy but overweight can cause them since we're talking about development it is extremely important that you do not over exercise your puppy a lot of people get so excited that they start taking their puppies out for walks and taking them everywhere do not do this they're babies and they cannot take an extraneous workout so just let them roam let them play around in the backyard if you want to start working on leash training you can do that inside you can do it indoor or even in your backyard i just like to let them run around and play and get their exercise like that last but not least he's already on the ground be patient this is a tip that goes off out to us puppy parents be very patient. Uh, bringing a puppy home is not easy. It can trigger a lot of anxiety. I'm sorry that he's not here anymore. I know he's a cute one. Because I know I've been through it and it's tough. Remember that it does get easy. It will be worth it. Um, you put in the work and the reward is so, so worth it. You know, we have the loo. We have living proof of that. Keep going on with your life. You know, I do my workouts. It's, it's an hour hour and a half workout, I'll come back perfectly within reason. This way he also keeps getting used to the crate and things like that. I, I feel for you if you're going through this, it's normal. You know, it, it it's a lot. A day, oh look at him, he's outside now. That's smart, he's going to the potty outside, I'm hoping. It just gets to a lot. Just know that this is temporary. The puppy phase, especially with giant breeds, they grow up so, so fast, I mean, in a way, I'm torn. I'm I'm ready to have them both grown and be able to like walk them both and have them both on a synced schedule and everything. But at the same time, I look at him and I'm like, oh, this won't last. It can be overwhelming. So just know it's normal. Just take a breather. You know, take your time. Thanks so much for sticking through this. Hopefully, it's somewhat helpful. Um, let me know what you'd like to see next. If you have any questions, if you have any other tips, you know, wish us luck. Oh my gosh, yes, he peed. He peed outside. Oh. Okay, we can end on a happy note. Bye.